Hey everyone, today we will be learning Vesper models, or in other words, how to determine the shape of a molecule in real life. As always, I am a professional who has, you know, the qualifications to be teaching this. So, when you're determining the shape of a molecule in real life, there's two simple steps. And that's first drawing the Lewis structure and then counting the bond, bonds and lone pairs. So let's start with water. We start by drawing the Lewis structure of, of, of the molecule. So we start by drawing the central atom, which is typically the atom that can form the most bonds. In this case, oxygen, which can form two bonds opposed to hydrogen's one bond. Oxygen gets six electrons. And then we add the two hydrogen, which have one electron, and we bond right there, right there. All right, next we count the bonds and the lone pairs. So oxygen has two atoms bonded right there and two lone pairs. That's four bonds total, two of which being lone pairs. Next, we take this, this information and we use the chart to help guide us. Alright, we go down to four bonds and then over to two lone pairs and we see that our oxygen has has a bent or angular geometry. And then here's more info regarding the Vesper chart. The E is our central atom, or typically, as I've said before, the atom that can form the most bonds, right there. Next is our X, which is the atom that bonds with the central atom. Next are these two dots, which are the lone pairs that come off of the central atom. Then there's these two triangles which this one represents uh, an atom that juts off behind the central atom, and this one represents an atom that juts out in front of the central atom. So here, in front and behind. So we've learned how to determine the geometry of a small molecule, but how do we do that with long molecules, or in other words, molecules that have more than one central atom. And we do that by determining the geometry for each individual central atom. Long molecules don't have one geometry, they have multiple. And in this case, C3H5Cl has three different geometries within it because it has three central atoms, C1, C2, and C3. So as always, start by drawing your Lewis structure. Cs with four electrons each. And these guys get bonded. And then our Hs. with one electron each, then these guys get bonded, and then our Cl, which goes off to the side right here, with seven electrons, and these guys bond. We see we have two electrons left over here, and those get turned into a double bond right there, and now we will count 
the bonds and lone pairs of each central atom individually. So our C1 has four atoms bonded to it. Our C2 has three atoms bonded and no lone pairs. And our C3 also has three atoms bonded with zero lone pairs. Next, we use the chart to find out the geometry of each of our central atoms. So our C1 had four bonds, no lone pairs, and that's a tetrahedral. Our C2 and C3 had three bonds, no lone pairs, and that'll be trigonal planar. Now we'll do the Vesmer model of ammonium, or NH3. Draw the Lewis structure. How many central atoms does NH3 have? How many lone pairs are there? How many bonds? What is the geometry? What are the bond angles? Between which bond are these angles? Draw the Lewis structure. So we start out with our central atom, the nitrogen with five electrons, and then add our hydrogens, and bond each. How many central atoms does ammonia have? And it has one central atom because we have one hydrogen. How many lone pairs are there? How many bonds? What is the geometry? Let me get my Lewis structure back up here. We have one lone pair and three bonds. And next we determine the, sorry, we have one lone pair and four bonds total. Next, we determine the geometry with that information. So four bonds total, one lone pair, it's a trigonal pyramid. What are the bond angles? Between which bonds are these angles? So we go back to our chart and look at the trigonal pyramidal pyramid, and we see our bond angle is 109 with that being between the front hydrogen and the parallel hydrogen. A molecule has a linear geometry. How many bonds and lone pairs does a central atom have? Stop the video here and try the problem by yourself. A molecule with linear geometry has two bonds and zero lone pairs. What bond angles does a central atom with a tri trigonal bipyramidal geometry have? Draw it. Stop the video here and try the problem by yourself. The bond angles are 90 and 120, with five atoms coming off the central atom, three being parallel, one being in back, one being front, with 120 between the front and back, and 90 between the parallel ones. Excuse me. What geometry does carbon dioxide have? Stop the video here and try the problem by yourself. Carbon dioxide has a linear geometry with two bonds and zero lone pairs. Which of these molecules have a vent geometry? Stop the video here and try these by yourself. Water, O3, and SCl2 all have bent geometries. How many central atoms are in H2O2? Stop the video here and try the problem by yourself. H2O2 has two central atoms.
Thank you, and good luck.